Hi, it's Ian, and welcome back to my 30 Days of Knife Skills. This is day 25, and I am working with fennel. Fennel arriving to the farmer's market, which this came from, is another sign that the summer season is here. And um, yeah, I don't always have um, fennel at home in the kitchen, but uh, when it's in season and it's this fresh, uh, it's, a, it's a nice little treat kind of a nice seasonal treat. So anyway, this is uh, very fresh and this was like like this at the farmer's market, but just to make it a little bit more manageable in the fridge, it's been cut in half. So um, all of this is actually edible. Um, I think some people might just focus on the bulb, which is great of course, but but um, these, these uh, stalks, you can do a lot with them. You can do things with the fronds. Um, the first thing, I guess, with the with the fronds, it it looks like dill, but uh, the flavor is a little bit different, and definitely, it's tougher. It's you can't. Well, you, I think there's a up to a certain point you can treat this almost like an herb and chop it up very small. Um, it also depends on how large the fennel is that you're working with. So if you find some more tender, this one, this stalk has a little bit more tender. Uh, these small stalks, I can feel how tender they are compared to some of the bigger pieces. So, so if I was going to, if I made a fennel dish and I wanted to finish it with some either garnish or chopped fennel, maybe I would try to find a more tender part and then treat this just like dill and go very small and I think that will be fine. It does it does have a different aroma and flavor. Um, it's not completely different. It, there's a there's a similarity but it is distinct enough that uh, that uh, it's different from dill. So anyway it's more of an anise quality which I think might be divisive among some people. I know in Japan, it's uh, that anise flavor is not always appreciated compared to other parts of the world. But anyway, I think with limited, uh, if you're careful, then you can use it like dill uh, with some care. But these bigger pieces, um, you can, for example, um, put them in something and cook with it. If you could actually put it in a stock, you could throw this whole thing in, in a stock and I think that would be a, a really good use of it. Uh, another thing might be if you have, um, if you're cooking, for example, salmon, whole filet of salmon, and normally you might put uh, lemon slices, salt and pepper, maybe olive oil. Um, you could just cut these up and make a bed because salmon and this kind of herb like dill or fennel is uh, really good together, also with lemon. So you could make a bed of this and put the fish on top, or you could put this on top of the fish, something like that. Other meats, I think, would be would be totally fine. So that would be helping flavor things, but not actually eating these, because this is even even something this small is kind of like parsley. It's uh, quite fibrous, and it's it's hard to hard to chew on that, unless it's cut very small. But still, it might be a little bit challenging. So, um, so what can we do with the harder pieces? Um, including like this this part. I think one thing when you look at uh, stalks like this uh, you can sort of just feel that it's pretty hard and you can feel it's kind of um, has a lot of fibers that are pretty strong uh, and you can also see on the inside that there's a there's that uh, kind of white core that you can tell just by looking at it that it's going to be um, not the most tender thing. So so it does need cooking, um, but once you start cutting it up, um, something I might do is cut it sort of in this kind of a long diagonal piece like this, something like that, so that you're really cutting the fibers small. And then um, this does well sauteed takes a little while. You might need to add some liquid, but it does pretty well. It'll soften quite a bit. Um, so a lot of times I'll just do that with the stock portion 
and cook it right along with a bulb portion as, as well. So um, that's totally fine. You could do that up here as well. Uh, it does get, the more green part, it does get more, more fibrous, but um, if you wanted to, you could just rip those off or cut them off and then kind of see how far Cool. It gets pretty white up, up in this area. And you can see how stringy. It's much more stringy, much harder than celery. So I think up in this area, I might not quite do that for eating. You could, of course, use it for flavoring other things. But, you know, up, up to about here should be, should be fine. When it's still not the most, most, uh, super green part, but when it's sort of um, moderately green like this, pale green, um, yeah, I think eating is no problem. Okay, getting to the ball portion, taking the root off, again using the heel of the knife, and probably everybody would make that first cut this way and expose this core, which I think this, um, it can cook, if you cut this out, just like other th other cores, for example, um, um, yeah, different different uh, vegetables, like, like cauliflower, the stem, or, the, or broccoli, or things like that. Um, also cabbage, sometimes when the cabbage starts budding or growing, uh, when it wants to start to think about bolting, uh, you'll see a bigger part of this core kind of in the entire cabbage. And usually, if you cut it thin enough or cook it long enough, then it's totally fine, um, completely edible, because it's not. There's no strings or tough fibers in there. So, um, but usually, most people. Uh, and here's a here's one example of needing a pointed tip on a knife. So, like a nakiri or vegetable cleaver. It's hard to do this cut. Um, and sometimes you can see this one I wash the outside but sometimes the inside pieces because this part is usually starts in the ground and it starts to grow out right out of the ground but it's right on the bottom um, and you can see the dirt so this would need to be taken back to to uh, the sink and, and washed. So this this core, it smells very aromatic, this core, you can just really smell it. So definitely you could slice this and use it as long as you're using it in a cooked cooked preparation. Kind of looks nice too, this, this nice uh, kind of layered look on that. Or you could also use it like the fronds and season something if you're not going to want to chew on that little bit tougher part. So from here, um, let's pretend that this is rewashed and all the layers are, usually the inside layers aren't bad, it's maybe the first or second out layers on the outside that might might have a little bit of dirt, just like leeks would be, have the same thing. So from here, um, again the fibers are going this way, so it's good to go against the fiber, I would not want to go this way because it's going to be hard to chew through. And it kind of depends. If we want to go for a raw addition to a salad, um, especially like a green salad, then I'm going to go as thin as possible. This would be a great time to, for a mandolin. As thin as possible, like this. Um, and this will be totally fine raw. It'll be very good like that, going against the grain. Uh, other, other things I might do is, again, saute with, with these pieces. So I might go more like a uh, quarter inch or so, this kind of size. Great for saute. It starts to kind of break down and, and almost feel like it's melting, kind of like um, onions do. It has that kind of a feel. And uh, this is also a great size for pickling, which I actually do quite a bit with, with fennel. It's good to eat um, raw in a salad. A lot of people will pair uh, oranges with fennel, so much so that some people think that it's 
kind of cliche and, and uh, they don't want to taste orange and fennel anymore. They, of course, do well, go well together, but um, maybe at a certain point, if every time you have fennel it's with oranges, maybe maybe it does get a little bit tiring. But that's a good um, salad size. And cooking it saute would be that size. And uh, another another great use for this size is to to do a vinegar, a quick vinegar pickle, which I have the, the process on my blog, but basically it's for maybe this much stuff. Um, and you can actually, I've thrown all of this into, into the, into the pickle and it's great. It flavors it. You can, you can eat it as well because it, it, um, softens a little bit. Um, but usually what I'm doing is one cup water, one cup vinegar, something neutral like rice vinegar, and then something like one tablespoon of um, sugar, one tablespoon salt, sometimes a little bit less salt, and whatever spices I'm looking for. But typically something like black pepper or bay leaves or things like coriander, stuff like that. Chilies, you could throw in um, dried uh, chipotle for a smoky kind of thing if you want. You can really throw in whatever you want to in that. And you heat that liquid up in a pan, make sure everything's dissolved. And then I would cut it up into this size. Same thing with all the stalks, sort of in this, could be a little bit bigger actually. And then um, put that into a mason jar and pour the hot liquid over and just let it cool down to room temperature for a few hours. And then put the lid on and then it goes into the fridge and it'll be fine for pretty much ever in the fridge. It'll stay very stable and just all the spice flavors will just get more and more uh, incorporated into the to the brine and to the vegetables but um, but that liquid is so acidic that there's no there's no chance of it going bad or anything like that in the, in the fridge so that's another another great uh, thing to do I have pickled very thin pieces which is very nice in some ways and thicker pieces which is really good in other ways um, Another good thing might be to mix it with something else like uh, red onions and you could pickle that all together and maybe if you like the, the theme with orange and fennel pairing, maybe throw in some orange peel which works really well uh, in those pickles too um, along with other citrus peels like lemon peel. It works really well. So, so that's pretty much what I do. Um, sauteed fennel is great. Something with like butter simply, butter and salt and pepper or olive oil, that's great, sauteed. Uh, pickled is delicious. And yeah, using this for what other creative uses is, uh, is also possible. So anyway, that's fennel, very aromatic, uh, a lot of fun to, to have as long as you know what to do um, in terms of breaking it down. So anyway, that is fennel. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you on the next one.